Teach a kid early the right way to live, like planting a seed that grows into a strong tree. Start small and take it all. What up, fellas? Welcome back to another Unload Session, where I dive deeper into the ATD letter that goes out every Saturday to help you engineer tools to attack the day. My name is Drew Cameron. For years, I was lost in life searching for answers with only one goal, create a strong legacy. To do this, I must become someone else. I must become something else. So I want to open this up with a question that I put at the top of the letter. Have you ever wondered how kids these days are making a big splash on YouTube? They're changing the game in ways we've never seen before. What's their secret? So <clears throat> my son has been building a YouTube channel for off and on about three years. And in that time, you know, he's seen a little success here and there. Um, but just recently he started getting consistent views on his channel and me with my infinite wisdom, wanting to make it into a system and help him out. You know, I started offering suggestions and started giving him little tidbits that I thought would help, but he wasn't having it. Um, anytime I brought up something, anytime I tried to show him something, he wasn't, he wasn't feeling it, you know? So it was kind of frustrating because I was like, man, I'm, I'm learning all this information as I'm building my YouTube channel, you know what I mean? But I want him to have even more success. You know, that's what I, as a father, as a man, just like I see things, I see a, a way it could, it could be better and I want to help him out. And like I said, we was going at it. And I don't mean like in an argument sense, I mean, just like I'm telling him and he's just like, nah, dad, I don't want to do that. And it just made me feel like, dang, you know, like I know this will work. I know that if you listen to me, you will get the success that you need. And he's like, nah, bro, like <laughs> that's not the vision that I got for my channel. So I just kept pressing them, kept telling them, hey, look, man, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of creators like on YouTube that are your age that are doing this. Or maybe you should try this. More views, constantly pushing my agenda, constantly pushing that, hey, I want you to succeed. And I'm trying to do my best to help you that. And again, like I said, he just wasn't having it. So now it's time to unload. And what I learned from that whole process, comfort zones and teenage innovation, my challenge. Now, I don't really care for change too much. I like to eat the same things. The best example I can give is I have taco Tuesdays, wing Wednesdays, hibachi chicken on Thursdays. Um, and I eat the same breakfast pretty much every day. And I have for years. And a lot of times with my wife, you know, she, she gets on me like, you know, you eat the same thing. You're not sick of eating the same thing. You don't want to change it up. And a lot of times I'm like, no, that's not something I want to do. I want to eat the same thing because I don't like to think about it. I know the foods. I know how many grams of protein. I know all of those things. And those are kind of the staple foods that allow me to reach my goals. And that's my standard. But when she decides to cook for me, I'm, I'm game for it because it's not something that I have to think about. It's something that she does for me and I enjoy everything that she cooks. I mean, she's an excellent cook, so that's too easy. I mean, I don't like to cook. You got to know what you like to do and what you don't like to do. And that's not something I like to do. I remember on a deployment and when I came back and for years with my brother, when he stayed with me and my kids, <laughs> it was chicken and green beans for years. That was my staple dinner, chicken and green beans, chicken and green beans, chicken and green beans. I did not care. I was eating that. It hit my macros. I was in and out. It tastes good. I could throw some non, uh, I'm sorry, sugar-free uh, barbecue sauce on it and I was good to go, you know, so it's too easy. So that was my comfort zone. You know, that's something that initially I wanted to stay comfortable in so I could continue to reach and stay within my standards. But like I told you with my son, he wasn't having that. He had his own vision and standard that he already had set 
with his YouTube channel that he was building. Parenting in the digital era, navigating the tech terrain. So when you're young, everything is fresh and new. You know, everything that you're doing, you've never done before. You have no regrets. And the idea of expiration, your expiration date, it's a myth to you. You know, death is not knocking on your door. So you have plenty of time to try and do as many things that you want your way. As we get older, though, we start becoming more of aware of our initial D-Day. Life is not short. Life is precious. And you got to make every moment count. So understanding what our kids are dealing with and what they're doing brings a whole new perspective. Right. So I stated before that you can't use an old playbook to a new game. And that's essentially what you're doing when you're a parent and you're remembering what your parents may have done for you, in my case, almost 30 years ago. And as the age and era of the digital world, technology is constantly forever changing. You got to change with it. So you got to remember the kids, they have what's called the forbidden fruit, Apple, the iPhone. So with that, there's a ton of information that they are privy to at their ages that we never had. So we still got to learn to adapt. And that's where you need even more discipline to be more aware of what's going on in a digital age. The digital age requires discipline and consistency. It's a gift and a curse to maintain that balance. So, you know, when you take your, your phone from your kids or you tell them to get off the computer or take the video game and you try to do a detox it doesn't always work because when they go back to school it's a requirement they issue them computers and those were those computers i'm gonna tell you these it guys that are working in the departments they have no major restrictions and they can't limit everything that your child can do because they need it for various assignments and projects that the school is working on so if you know passcodes, if you know their passwords, that's cool and all. But let me tell you this, Google Docs, if they make a Google Doc and they share it with someone, they can literally write messages in the Google Doc and basically message to somebody else who has access to that Google Doc. There's so many crafty ways that these kids are like breaking the system and working in the gray area. It's it's enlightening, but it's also kind of scary. So make sure you reevaluate your parenting style. Rethinking parenthood, learning from our kids' paths. So it's kind of an outdated saying that parents should lead and kids should follow. Now, that is true, but you got to take it with a grain of salt. You can gain insight from anybody. I learn something every day from my kids. You are the enemy. You are getting in your way. You don't know everything. So let me tell you, there's no book to parenting. You can Google it, but parenting is more about intuition and perspective. Lacking the knowledge, the perspective, and the ability to keep an open mind is continually causing you to fail. You are your harshest critic and your worst enemy. I try to impose my will and kind of force my son to do it my way hinder his creative process. And nobody wants that. Fatherhood and flexibility, learning from trial and error. So me trying to force him to do it my way, it was a lot of trial and error there. I tried buying everything he needed from software to lighting to camera setups. I even get, bought him a couple courses. My goal and what I wanted was I wanted him to get 200K views. I wanted him to hit those five and six digit numbers because I saw the amount of work that he was doing. But every shiny object I put in his face, he wasn't having it. He was like, nah, bro, like that ain't, that's not what I want to do. That's not my vision. You can't be forced to create inspiration. You'll get something out of it, but it won't be what you expected. So Erica Badu has a quote, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my snit, right? And it's true. I remember being a barber and you you got to take the criticism because as a barber, you have to craft and get better. And it is your interpretation of the haircut they want. But you also have to make sure they're happy. 
So you have to be able to take criticism, but you also have to be able to give the canvas or the person what they want. And sometimes that can be difficult, but it's something that's all a part of the process. Embracing their vision, insights into creative independence. So small business owners, creators, artists, they all deal with the same thing. They're sensitive about their craft. I was sensitive about mine and I still am, but I recognize the growth in getting feedback and having a clear understanding of what the vision is. So when I told you that story about my son, I was able to see some perspective in he's much, he's more like me than I want to admit. You know what I mean? Because that's how I am. I don't take criticism sometimes very well, at least on the first interaction. But as time goes on, it's like, you know what, bet you gave me that feedback. Let me see if I can make this better. Because clearly if I'm working in my case on making a podcast, making a uh, article, making the the new challenge I have coming out, the and I'll tell you guys more about that, the uh, 1045 challenge. If I'm doing that and it's only a challenge that's beneficial to me, how can I expect you to want to do it? How can I expect you to want to watch my YouTube channel and listen to me talk for 15, 20 minutes at a time, unless I'm giving you value, unless I know and I have to ask for feedback. Navigating the paternal waters marked by both success and stumbles. Battle scars along the way are a part of the journey. And if you don't get any scars, you don't learn any lessons. I get tons of battle scars from fatherhood, learning and growing with my kids along the way. And that's what this journey has been with my son. So this has been an unload session. Before we go into the next two parts, I want to leave you with understanding that challenges and having a clear vision and understanding of what you want to create or what you want to do isn't something that you can rush isn't something that you can figure out overnight parenting is that same process fatherhood business creation it's all rolled into the same process you have to take the time to understand and get a clear vision on what it is you're trying to accomplish. Like, share, subscribe, and continue to watch for part two for Dad versus YouTube.